Hello, hello, combat here, and welcome back to another Marvel Snap video. In this video, it's that time of the week again where we're going to be looking over uh, 10 decks of the week, and we'll be talking about the new card that came out this week at the end of the video. So, if you want to hear my thoughts on the card, stay tuned for that. Uh, before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 10k. Hit that like button. Hitting the like and leaving comments helps a lot with the algorithm. It really helps me get my video out there. So, if you're enjoying the content, always just leave a like or a comment doesn't that have to be much it just helps the channel a lot and i appreciate it anyways let's get into the deck so the first deck is gonna be this good stuff deck that i this is my deck uh as always the decks come from all over the spot there'll be some from untapped that are performing really well there'll be some from people people putting on twitter and stuff like that and all all over the spot like i'm not gonna go and hit the 10 best decks from like untapped stats wise because people want to play fun decks and they get a, like looked at the top 10 and was like for help for final decks or something no one wants to see that many finals right so i like to just make it get a wide range so anyways the good stuff deck this is a deck that i came up with and i've been waiting to play for a while waiting for proxima come out and the deck is performing really well it's kind of super flexible as well like if you don't have corvius uh moon knight's good uh any other discard good here like blade would fit in here well right uh i wouldn't say lady sif ideally because you don't really want to get in the more dark stuff like that right it is actually flexible you fit another discard in here you could even try and put in like a helicarry if you wanted to you could put in uh, a collector, stuff like that. It's actually really flexible. This is the list that was working well for me because it's got a lot of threat, right? You've got me because it's just kind of annoying little buggy, especially if you get them out of one, right? Mobius, Mobius can grow. Strong guy is a free, <coughs> a free nine. Dakin's, what is Dakin? A free, a free eight, right? Uh, Proxima is a zero seven. A statue's a 1-6. You know, you get a lot of stats down for very cheap. And it's kind of really good. Anyways, so that's it for that deck. I had a video on that if you want to see it. Anyways, next up's just a standard discard. I've actually <coughs> been really enjoying discard. People rate off the discard cards. Put them in the worst the cards this month. I actually put them quite kind of high. Because I believe that uh, these two together will give discard what they needed. And Corvius and Glee. Corvius. Proxima did that. The next one discard. Yeah, it's not targeted. Discard, but it's two discards. You don't really need the energy. It's a free five. And like, the energy is nice, but it's still a free five, right? The discard's two cards. And if you go on like this discard route, like cards in here that you don't mind discarding you get swarm. You don't really mind getting rid of Colian or Blade. Helicarrier, Apocalypse, Proxima, only like Dracula, Mobius, Collector, and the one that you don't really want to discard, the rest of it you're okay with discarding, right? So having I mean, two discards for free cost, but it gives you an extra energy, is fantastic. So I think that's what's done with the discard decks. I can't remember what else, but oh yeah, this is a Fanosu deck. I tried this this morning and performed quite well. I like I like Thanos for the reason it is kind of open, but obviously if you've played any this season. Obviously, you know, the meta was very open, right? It's just hella stuff. So, we're seeing the zoo deck. I liked it. Give it a go. It was really fun. And it performed quite well. I have kind of a lot of options. At the, like, it's got a lot of ongoing. It's got uh, Valkyrie to cut stuff down. It's got a lot of power. You know, you can get a cool obsidian out there. Black Swan helps you cheat out your one drops. Uh, Blue Marvel, obviously, your buffs are buffs. Dazzle is actually incredibly good in decks that you can just fill it up. And obviously, you got Kyra to protect everything from Killmonger. So it's a good all round deck. Next up, a Dark Hawk deck, a Dark Hawk Bounce deck. This is kind of probably where his home is right now. I played this this morning and <laughs> I got like Nico to copy Dark Hawk, which was fantastic. <laughs> All right, uh, so this is probably where his home is, right? Because you're gonna be like, you're gonna most likely be bouncing werewolf around a lot, and then on turn six, oh, hopefully you you picked up Cog a few times, you Ice Man some stuff, you Black Widow some stuff. I'm not sure about the Psylocke. I'd probably put Grandmaster in myself just because I like it in this type of deck. But 
This has got Psylocke in it. And then you, you're doing that, you're bouncing Werewolf around, and then you drop a Dark Orc on the last turn. And then you've got a big Werewolf and a Dark Orc. Oh, God. Uh, next up, just a Junk. Uh, Dark Orc, this is probably his other home. Like, nothing really much changed. I don't even think this deck changed any from the patches. It just stayed the same. Because, quite frankly, you don't really need... Uh, to reduce the cost of Dark Hawk here. You can just put him out for power and turn a live. You've already been a super annoying with the rest of the stuff, right? So, it hasn't really changed much since the OTA. Next up, Lockdown. Uh, <laughs> like, Lockdown's just stuff floating around. It's not taking over. It's what it should be, right? It's pretty good. It slots into the meta. Okay. It's not taking over. It's not real garbage. It can be annoying if you face a lot of it. And it just kind of does some work. You've got plenty of ways of growing. Some stats, right? Medusa's a 2-5. Jessica Jones is a 4-9 or a 3-9 if you've got Zabu out. Miss Marvel, Reaching Lanes, obviously your Storm, your Jeff, Vision, Doom. Everyone has got to play this uh, lockdown. It's just a decent enough deck. Next up. Now that hell of stuff's gone, like Phoenix Force, I was having a time before like, this Thanos uh, Hella meta came in because it can power a lot of power and it can grow quite quick and it can get out of hand. Honestly, it can get really out of hand if you're not careful. Now that like they fixed the Phoenix Force clones that can move, like, if you get Phoenix Force down on four with just a multiple man, right? That's going to be eight in every location. Like you're pretty much getting a guarantee. Probably 24 in each lane, right? That's, that's that's pretty good, right? You're probably getting... It's very easy to get above 20 power in each lane with this deck, which is fantastic. That's normally enough to win. Uh, next up, we have uh, a negative tribunal list. This is a interesting list. The idea is obviously you're going to blame it's a negative and you're going to win with tribunal, right? Uh, a lot, there's not much Enchantress around. Super Scrolls are a very good tech card. If you come across any ongoing stuff, this can help a lot. Uh, obviously, hitting the negative on any of these cards is fantastic, right? Your Iron Man and you stuff like this. Like, Tribunal's a decent enough card, right? It's just trying to find its best home. At one point, it was a Hella stuff with Invisible Woman, and then he gave us a life, so that deck was kind of dead, right? Uh, it would be playing just normal Sarah deck without Mr. Negative, but I've seen people put Mr. Negative in there, which kind of makes sense because you're already playing the Ravonas, right? You're playing the Sarah, so why not add the Mr. Negative in here for extra power? Actually, nice little uh, changes to that. Another Mr. Negative there, I think this was Glenn's deck, like the game developer for Marvel Snap shared this, and people were loving it. Like, it's got Havoc in here, Negative, uh, Professor X, like if you hit negative on that, it's a 1 5, right? Lockdown location, great. Jane to pull out some of your zero cost, more for anything big. And Loki, if you just have a bad game, right? Like, Loki's here for if you don't have negative, Mr. Negative by turn 3, probably. If you've drawn pretty bad and then you just play Loki on 4 and just change it up. And the last deck we're going to look at today is just a normal Loki deck followed on from like that cheese type Loki deck. This is just a normal Loki deck. You're going to be adding cards with your hand with Snowguard, Coulson. And then you've got Loki to just get rid of him. There's not that many actual cards in here for Loki. It's more of like a control Loki deck, right? Like a dino deck with Loki. Now that I'm looking at it, right? It's just literally not really a Loki deck. I mean, it's Loki in it, but it's not like what you'd expect from a Loki deck, right? This is more like a dino deck with Loki if, if stuff goes wrong. I like it. I actually like it. Loki's a fun card to play. Obviously, everyone hates him because of how strong he was, but he's pretty fun. And that's it for the decks. Now we're going to look at Proxima. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so let's look at Proxima Midnight. She came out this week, Series 5. A lot of people said, yeah, she's okay. She might be a little bit clunky if you like this guy. Yeah, honestly, she's performing a lot better than a lot of people expected, even me. I thought she'd be good. 
Well, she'd open up, discard a bit. And she has. The discard, discard is performing quite well right now. Uh, she is she probably isn't worth getting from Spotlight Caches unless you like discard. If you're going to play her, she's worth picking up, right? If you like discard, she's definitely worth picking up. Issue is, she's not in a very good Spotlight Cash week unless you've got if you've got all the cards, right? If you're missing a card, she's okay to go for. I, but it's kind of hard. I always like to say that, that the cards she's in there with, she's in there with what, like, who's she in there with? Dakin and stuff, right? I think. Yeah, like, I like a wider range when I tell, I suggest people to open the spotlight cash. She's like, these are all aimed at one type of deck. So it's discard. If you're a discard player, you, you open spotlight caches if you're missing any of these cards, right? But if you're not, it's kind of awkward. Like, even if you like this card, right? the other cards are kind of okay. They're not like great, which is always turns me off. I like to have an, one really good card in the spotlight with a card that's okay. Like, if there's a new card's okay, and I think it's playable, I like there to be another good card in the spotlight cache before I tell people suggest people that they open if they want those cards and this week isn't one of them it's a kind of weak she's great the rest of the cards are average and, and bad so honestly up to you but i find her amazing i like her uh, one of my favorite cards at the moment but outside of that it's kind of a bit awkward anyways that's it for the video don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll catch you tomorrow for another video